Hey, how's it going? Uh, I wanted to do a little quick uh, tool review on one of my first tools I'm buying for my uh, new mountain bike. Um, uh, when I was checking out, the uh, guy who just sold me the bike uh, was like, yeah, you need a shock pump. And I was like, does it come with one? He's like, nope. So for you know, five and a half or six thousand dollars, you don't get a thirty dollar shock pump, which is cool. You know, I get it. So then I was looking around for shock pumps and uh, there's a whole bunch of them. They're mostly made in Taiwan and it looks like they're mostly the same couple manufacturers who are rebranding them. Um, but I read a couple good reviews about this brand. Uh, this one's actually, I don't know if you can tell, it's made in Germany. <laughs> it's the biggest German label I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so this one's made in Germany. The company's called uh, SKS Germany. Uh, in case you forgot, it was from Germany. Um, the funny thing is, this box, because the label's so big on their printer, they couldn't even say made in Germany anywhere on this box. Um, so this is actually the little pump, and this is the big pump. It's kind of funny. Nowhere on this box does it say made in Germany, and this is like, you know, you can see made in Germany from space. Um, so, yeah, so these are the two pumps I got. So this is called the USP. Um, which stands for Universal Suspension Pump. There you go, that's, that's cool. And this is the MSP, which stands for Minneapolis St. Paul. But in this case, it actually stands for Mountain Suspension Pump. So I guess if you're going to the mountains, you better have this one. Um, so this is the pump uh, that I got first, and then I just happened to see this on Amazon. I ordered it at the same time, and I was figuring I'd try them out. Um, I was debating which one to get, but Based on the gauge and this one being shattered, Amazon made that decision for me. Um, so obviously this gauge got shattered. It actually still works. Um, as far as the build quality on both of these, you can see they're, they're clearly made in the same factory. Um, they're both German pumps. Um, they, the quality of the build is, is like gorgeous. The thing I would compare it most to is if anybody had like an old school mag light, uh, the ones that are made in the USA where everything was like milled aluminum and brushed and looked really gorgeous. Um, you know, you get that feeling from these pumps that they're like, you know, each piece was made high quality, high tolerances by somebody who knew how to run a milling system. And then uh, everything's kind of compartmentalized and put together. Um, everything works really well. It's really smooth. This uh, larger pump, the little handle flips down. Uh, and at first I was worried there would be too much play and it may end up breaking because you get a lot, a lot of leverage on it, leverage on the lever. Uh, but it, it feels pretty good. Um, the only thing I don't love about this particular pump is it's kind of a brushed finish. Um, it's definitely solid aluminum. I mean, you can feel in the weight category, um, they, you know, it is definitely, they're both solid. Um, this is not some kind of stamped product. This is actually milled. Um, they both have this really nice braided hose. Um, the disconnect system is really cool. You can see plenty of videos on how these work, but basically you, you pump your item up and then you disconnect this sub assembly and that isolates the valve from the pump. So then when you disconnect completely, uh, there's only a tiny bit of air trapped up in that little end of, the, end of this little connector. So you don't really leak very much out. Uh, gauge, I would assume it works well if it actually worked. Um, it comes with a bar, uh, PSI, um, little linear gauge right here to try to figure out the differences. Um, again, the lower assembly is all plastic. You can see as you get down, it's it's almost all plastic. Um, but that's kind of what you're going to want anyways for, for that kind of a part. Um, this one is a little bit nicer. Um, they've, uh, they've actually used aluminum for the rod. It may even be steel, actually. It looks kind of like it's maybe... Uh, chromed steel, uh, aluminum with this really nice knurling right on here. Uh, again, this is some gorgeous machining. This upper piece is really well machined. It's all one housing. Let me take it apart here. Um, so, you know, it comes apart. You can see every piece is designed to sort of come off of this, uh, housing piece. Um, and it all comes apart and, uh, you know, so you can clean it and you can service it. And theoretically you could order parts. I'm not sure if that would actually work, but you could. Um, you know, even this lower assembly comes apart. Let me show you here. So this becomes almost like a tube that you can go and clean out and make sure uh, everything looks good. There you go, you can kind of see through it. Um, 
really liked this one a little bit more just with the way it's been assembled. It's smaller, which kind of is a benefit because uh, just uses less space on the work stand. Um, get this little piece through here. Uh, but the only one gripe I saw on this thing is the gauge that it comes with. Um, it comes with the tiniest pressure gauge I have seen. Um, yeah, well, let me screw that in a little bit. All right, so this is the gauge it actually comes with. Uh, this is a, I have it upside down, sorry about that. This is a tiny little SKS gauge um, with probably the, th the th smallest thread attachment I've ever seen. Um, in order to get this off, you need really a special spanner that could get back behind it. Um, I ended up finding actually kind of a pair of pliers that, that would just happen to fit it, and then I was able to get it off. Um, so I took this little guy off, which was kind of a monster to take off, and I ordered this part. Uh, this is an Ash Ashcraft gauge here. Um, it's a uh, uh, one and a half inch, uh, quarter inch brass, uh, zero to 300 PSI uh, Ashcraft gauge. Um, this is not expensive gauge. This one's only like like 10 bucks. I think that's what I paid for it and like five bucks for shipping or three or four bucks for shipping. Um, this is actually government surplus. So, uh, but you could put a really fancy gauge on this. You could put a digital gauge, you could put whatever you want to, as long as it was quarter inch or sorry, not quarter inch, uh, as long as it was, uh, eighth inch NPT, um, you could put it on there and then your gauge would be just as fancy. It, the box says that it's limited to 290 PSI. I think it's limited to 290 PSI because that's how far the gauge goes. Because this one says it's limited to 325, and that's how far the gauge goes on this one. It goes to 325, which is like 2 point or 22 bar. Um, I'm not sure what the actual pressure that these gauges could go or these pumps could go up to. I think you're more limited by gauge pressure. So, uh, so yeah. So basically, this is what I'm going with. Swapping out this little teeny weeny gauge for this gauge. Um, it actually also comes with pan over here. This one happened to come with that bag, which is nice. Uh, this one I think is supposed to come with a bag, but that was also missing. So clearly Amazon did a number on this poor guy. So he's going back. This one's staying. Really beautiful gauge. Um, I think I paid about 50 bucks for this thing. And then, like I said, another 10 bucks plus shipping, five, 15 bucks for that top piece. Uh, but I feel like this is the sort of tool that, you know, last year a lifetime and as gauges go bad or whatever or seals go bad you can really fix this it doesn't just go in the trash bin after you know the plastic piece breaks and you throw it away or whatever so definitely recommend it as a uh, pump i tried it out it's uh, obviously a pretty short throw but um you know when you're jacking up suspension it doesn't feel like you know you're doing that constantly all day every day um so it kind of works for the size all right, I hope that helps someone out, uh, and uh, there you go.